Hello, so this is a video where I'm going to show you how to use the ivy tool that we've been showing off in a few of our shorts. Um, you've probably seen this house with all the ivy on it um, in some of our videos and uh, I know one of you requested uh, how to actually use this and what tool this is. Um, so first of all, uh, I have it up here for you. It's just called an ivy generator. Um, when we were making this model, I was looking for a way to make Ivy procedurally um, and ended up coming across this like rather small tutorial on YouTube um, that uh, told me about this. And this is this is from something like 2007, I think. Um, yeah, you can see, yeah, it's from around 2007. I mean, this this picture here is, is copyright 2007, last changes from 2008. So quite an old tool, but as you can see from the images, it still looks pretty damn good. Um, the amazing thing is too, when you use it, it generates the ivy and then you can customize it and then it gives you all the textures for this too. It's, it's honestly bloody amazing. Um, so we've been using it for a lot of things and you can see a bunch of like example pictures here um, and it's insane. So you, you can just download this for um, Mac, Windows, Linux. Um, I've got it here on Windows and I'm just gonna kind of show you how it works. So this is the house model we've been using. Um, one thing that took me a little bit to figure out, uh, and I was wondering why it wasn't working to begin with, is that when you bring your model into uh, the program, let's say if you usually have like a house like this and you built it like this with uh, no thickness, you want it to have thickness. Um, so like I had to go and fill in all of these holes here, like all the windows, you know, I had to go and fill all those in. Um, I had to then uh, fill in the bottom here and the top, and then also your mesh, um, has to be uh, triangulated as well because if you try to bring it in with quads it's gonna look really funky and it just won't work so you have to make sure that you triangulate your mesh um, in Maya first if, if you're not sure how to do that you can just come up to mesh and then triangulate and they'll automatically do it for you and that's, and that's fine um, what I would suggest is you just create like a copy of your model and then like triangulate it so then you just have that as an extra thing and then what I ended up making because um, we have all these different bits like separate pieces right that we want the ivy to curve around is I made this which is like a sealed off as you can see I've blocked in all the holes um, like completely fused triangulated mesh and this like works pretty well and then it's got something for all the ivy to hook around like even the window frames stuff like that and you can get a bit heavy depending on the model so I wouldn't recommend bringing in anything too massive um, but the tool works entirely on OBJ. So um, if I quickly navigate to where my uh, OBJ file is in our assets folder, um, I've just did, I just exported it. It's called called it export for IV um, as an OBJ file. And then if we go ahead and open up um, the uh, the IV generator, once you download it, you're going to get a folder like this. I've got IV generator Windows 32 1.3. Um, you'll see these files here. There's a README. You can have a look through that if you want. Usage. Perfect thing about this as well is you can use it for personal projects, commercial use. Absolutely fine. Um, it's got the texture information in here. So we've got like, I mean, the, the, you even get a variety of texture, right? Like you've got uh, dead leaves. You've got um, younger leaves. Uh, you've got the masks. You've got normal maps. You have everything. You've got the bark. It's it's honestly insane. Um, but anyway, to launch the file, you go into bin and then just double click on Ivy Generator and that will boot. And it's pretty old school looking. Um, the controls are a bit weird, uh, especially if you're used to using software like Blender or Maya. Like to zoom in and out, you hold down right click and drag. And then to just pivot the camera, you hold down left click. And this is almost like you're looking through like a POV camera. And you hold down shift and left click to orbit. Um, but it doesn't orbit around the center of the grid. It's quite funky, um, but once you get used to it, you know, you'll be fine. And you have all these like different weights here and like um, settings that you can change, right? For like the IV size, the, uh, this here is called the birth rate. So it's like how many, how often, um, little the likelihood for a leaf to be generated if you want more sparse IV. Uh, anyway, so to get your model in, you go to import OBJ um, I am going to grab the uh, model export we had, the triangulated model, just import that. And if you're wondering why this takes a while, it, it really it doesn't normally. Um, all you have to do is just left click and then it's, it's an old bit of software. I feel like you have to give it some slack, especially considering what it does. Just left click and um, your model will show up. It has actually loaded. You just need to give it a nudge. Um, and yeah, so this is our model in the software. And to start growing ivy, literally all you have to do is find a spot. I'll pick uh, the corner of the house here, double click, and you can see that's 
placed a marker, right? Now, to begin growing this, you literally just click grow, right? And as you can see, it's now spreading out around the house and it kind of dynamically looks and takes into account like gravity, right? That's all of these sliders here, like gravity weight, growing, uh, ivy size. So you can adjust this. I would recommend adjusting the ivy size depending on like what you're working on. For me, uh, for the house, the default just happens to sort of work. Um, if your mesh is quite low res, this will grow really, really fast. And you might actually even end up having too much ivy. So you kind of need to watch it, right? It's almost like ivy in real life. It kind of like it will grow quick. It's a bit of a nuisance um, in my experience. And uh, but it will literally just go out like this and you can see it in real time. And then I have one time left this to grow for too long and come back and be like, oh, God, it's taken over the whole house, um, which wasn't what I wanted at all. Um, so then I, I had to redo it. So you kind of just have to sit here and, and, and watch it for a bit. Um, so I'll let that go for a few seconds more. But this will literally cover the house if you give it time. Um, almost like real ivy. And it grows from a point down here, right? So it always starts from like a thicker base. And then it spreads out into these smaller tendrils. It's really, really quite cool. And the fact this is from 2007 just like blows me away. Anyway, so once we're happy with the growth, we'll just go ahead and tap grow again. And what they'll do is that will stop um the growing and then you can always get that to go again you just press grow again and if i wanted to reset this i could just double click somewhere else um i won't do that because then it will get rid of our ivy but i could just double click somewhere else and then that will um reset all of this right but if i wanted it to keep growing i just press grow again and it continues on from where it was um but this is the ivy it's created and you can see like it's spreading off the sides we're getting these really nice shapes it's kind of going in and everything it will go up on the roof if i if i give it enough time um and then to actually get the ivy, all you do is press birth. And voila, there you go. You got your leaves. Um, it's looking a little bit sparse, right? So if I wanted to adjust this, I could go ahead and change the leaf probability down here. So by default, it's on point 0.7. And the funny thing is, the lower this is, the higher the probability. It took me a second to figure that out. So if I put it down to like point 0.6 and I click birth now, you can see we get way more leaves. Um, Annoyingly, you can only do one section at a time, so you can't like double click somewhere else and create another bit of ivy. Um, but I mean, guys, it's from 2007. Um, you know, it's already doing so much considering how old it is. Um, but yeah, so what you have to do is just like take one piece after you've birthed it, export the OBJ and the material file, and then bring that into your scene and then redo it every time and just remember where you had your ivy before. And, and that's what we had to do for this. We just had to create maybe like 12 or so bits of separate ivy um but once you're happy with this you go ahead and export the obj uh i have a folder i've made here one i prepared earlier i'm just going to call this ivy underscore zero zero one and this will give us excuse me sorry um this will give us a uh obj file and also a material file and that's going to be important because we need to add our own shaders um, because by default it's not going to be using the Arnold ones um, that's what we're rendering with um, if you're using any other renderer you're going to have to do that too it's just um, it, it, it does need a bit of setup unfortunately but you know uh, we can live with that it's already doing so much of the heavy lifting um, otherwise we would have had to script this or not script this but create this um, with 100 who knows how many nodes in Bifrost um, so we're just going to go ahead and drag and drop that in. And as you can see, it fits perfectly to our model. You know, how wonderful is that? And right now it might look a bit funky, right? A bit crunchy because it's just a bunch of like, uh, you know, fires like that. It doesn't look too much like a leaf. It's just an individual square, but it's just a low res tile. And we're going to do a bit of a trick um, using the textures. Uh, we'll be using masks. So if you're uh, unfamiliar with those, um, all this will do is it will tell Arnold like the black part, transparent. The white part, uh, not transparent. <laughs> That's about as simple as I can put it. And then that it would just say you know, which which piece to keep down to transparent. And that way we can get away with um, each leaf just being a square like this. Uh, and to add your shaders, uh, it's a bit finicky. So we're going to open up the hypershade. I've already created my shaders. Okay, I'll um. I'll show you what I've got. So we've got uh, the bark, and there's new leaf and old leaf, and there's also a dead leaf, but I opted not to use that. Um, and then literally all we have is we have the, uh, in this case, 
one of the leaf textures um, going into the subsurface color and the base color. I'm just running it for AI color correct just because that's what I like to do. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. You could just have this literally you know, plug in from the base color. Um, and uh, the roughness and the normal. And then the important thing is as well is to have the transparency file, which uh, is the one we looked at earlier. That's the, uh, the mask files here. Okay. And um, I think what we might be able to do is provide the file. I have a file for some of these shaders. I can, I can give that to you guys. Um, so you don't have to set that up because it's a bit of a pain. And then you'll just have access to these free. I've, I've just exported that for myself. I'll give it to you guys as well. So you don't have to, to deal with that. Assuming you're rendering with Arnold. Um, if not, uh, you know, by all means, use your own preferred render. Um, anyway, uh, I'm getting sidetracked. To add our shaders, what we're going to do is... Uh, when we import the OBJ, it also has a material file, and that will have created, as you can see here, leaf young, leaf adult, and uh, where is it? Branch, okay? And these are all just Lambert shaders. It's not using the texture files. Um, oh, no, actually, it is. But you never mind. We don't want to use a Lambert file because we're, we're you know rendering this, and it's not 2005. Um, we're going to use the AI standard surface. So uh, because this is all one mesh, right, instead of separating this and trying to add everything, uh, we are instead going to select this material, the leaf young, hold down right click and go select objects with materials. And if we come back, what that's done is, because this is a combined mesh, it's selected all the faces. If I press control one, that's now going to isolate those faces. Okay. Now to add the specific young leaf material here, we're going to want to go into face mode. Okay. And the reason for that is if we just went into object mode and added our material, we'd be like, oh, great. It's only added it to these leaves, but no, it hasn't. It's added it to the whole thing. So, and I, I've like when we were making the ivy for this, because there were just so many, um, I definitely made that mistake a few times and was like, oh, why does my branch look like a bunch of leaves? Um, so remember to go into face select mode and then select before you assign your material. Okay. Then I'm going to use the one we already got. Let me just double check. This is the leaf young. Go to assign as this existing material. We're going to go to new leaf young. Okay. And then let's put that on there. We're then going to repeat that three times for the two for the for the three materials. Um, select object with materials. Now we're doing the leaf adult. Face select mode again. Hold down right click, assign existing material, and then leaf adult. And then one more time, just for the branches. Select object with material. And you can see here, like just how it's all kind of like woven out. And the fact that you do this in like like seconds, really. Um, depending on how complex your model is, it's just insane. And like, look how well it's conformed. You know, I, I, when I saw this, I was shocked that this is free. Okay, and maybe there are like better solutions to this now. This is quite old, but just for like getting quick results, damn, dude. Like, I, I, you know, this is perfect for our needs. Um, and yeah, so that's adding the materials. I'm then just going to go to file and optimize scene size. What this will do is it will just get rid of any of the extra textures that we're not using anymore that came with the material file. Um, if I just go ahead and enable our light and then go and render this, if we give that a second just to figure out what it's doing. I have a bunch of materials on this house and some displacement maps, so it might take a second to start. Um, so forgive me for that. But, oh, never mind. Oh, no, actually, you know why? It's because <laughs> uh, that bit of geo was still visible. But as you can see, uh, if I just let this render for a sec, we now have a bunch of leaves. We don't just have some weird looking crunchy squares. Um, and it like it, it to me, you know, from a like, maybe close up, it's not going to hold up. Right. But from like mid to, to background kind of objects, it, it looks phenomenal for being from 2007. You know, I'm, I'm so impressed. Um, so, yeah, what I'll do is I'll provide the, the materials for this if you're using Arnold. That way you can just kind of like get quick started here. Um, and then I'll also provide the link for the, the tool itself so you can download it. And again, it's available on Linux. Um, if I pull it back up here, uh, Linux, Mac, and Windows, um, made by this guy called Thomas Luft um, from the University of Constance, apparently. I think this guy's from uh, Germany, but um, anyway, not important. Uh, he, uh, he's, he's just like blessed us with this and left because this hasn't been updated in years. Um, but yeah, if, if you're looking for an Ivy Genes, I really encourage you to use this. Very, very easy to use. Fantastic bit of software. Um, yeah, anyway, if you have any questions on how to use it at all, or if you're running into issues, um, please do let us know. Um, leave it in the comments, and we'll be happy to, to answer them or make a follow-up video. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.